Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Here's what God's word says. And although you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you formerly lived according to this world's present path, according to the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the rule of the spirit that is now energized the sons of disobedience, among whom all of us also formerly lived out our lives in the cravings of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even though we were dead in transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. Yes. By grace you are saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus to demonstrate in the coming ages the surpassing wealth of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Yes. It is not from works so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, having been created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand so we may do them. You may be seated. This is... Uh, first in a three-part series on how disciples grow. This one's entitled Spiritually Dead. As we recap, Jesus in, is, lives in, in the eternal past. He was before creation. He came to us in the flesh, which is what we're going to celebrate in a few days, and came to be a bridge between us and God. He came to teach us how to be his disciples, to be his followers, to be his apprentices, to be his kingdom citizens. Basically, he came to set us free. He came to save us. When he was born in that manger 2,000 years ago, he came because salvation is past, present, and future. He saved us from what we used to be. He is saving us now and saved us for where we're going to be in the future. So we need to understand that when Christ commanded us to make disciples, according to God's word, there are stages we go through as we grow in Christ. We, it, it just not, it's just not instantaneous. First of all, everybody's not already saved. I know there are preachers telling you everybody's going to heaven. The Bible doesn't say that. I'm not sure where they got that from. I guess that's their way of saying they don't need to change. But also we go through stages as we mature in Christ. Yes. Here are the five stages. First, people are spiritually dead. Second, they're spiritual infants and spiritual children. Third, mm -hmm. fourth, young adults and then spiritual parents. Mm -hmm. And over the next few weeks, we're gonna go over those different stages so we can understand, first of all, what stage we're in, amen? All right. And then understand where we, where we need to get to. Now, as we do this, I don't want y'all to look around the church anybody else. Say, uh huh, so and so's in that stage. You hear me? This is not about them. It's about you, church. Everybody pat themselves on the chest. This is about me. It's about me. It's not about everybody else. Don't worry about who you then. Amen? Don't worry about them. You worry about me right now. Because I don't want everybody looking around and telling you, uh huh, somebody else in that stage. If you point out to them, you're probably not saying stage. Well. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, spiritually dead, when you look at our text, it talks about how we're dead in our transgression and sins. We're dead in our sins. Mm -hmm. There are folk walking around right now on earth that are dead. Because mm -hmm. when you don't know Jesus, you're dead spiritually. See, when Adam and Eve sinned, they died three different ways. Spirit, soul, and body. And the first thing that happened was God's spirit disconnected from theirs and they realized they were alone because they no longer had God's spirit inside of them. They had a spirit that man that died. Man is spirit, soul, and body with three things. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and a body. And when you're not saved, your spirit is dead. You're dead. You just don't realize it. You walk around as a corpse. Some of us used to be dead. We go around doing our own thing. We're living our life in our sin of transgressions. We're doing, we were doing things we shouldn't do. 
Amen. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. We out there clubbing and, and drinking and having all kinds of fun, we thought. Amen. In sin. Some of us grew up in church and knew we were in sin. I'll never forget being in the bar arguing. You know, you, you have folk, we get to drink and we start trying to get intellectual. Hmm. Folk telling me God didn't exist. And I sat in my drink. Yeah, it does. And I sit there and argue with them that God exists. And one of them finally said, Well, you know so much about God. Why aren't you serving him? Hmm. I picked my drink back up and said, Well, I'm probably on my way to hell. <laughs> Amen. Huh. But I was out there. I knew it. Huh. I knew that if I died in my sin, I was going to hell. Why? Because I was spiritually dead. Spiritually uh -huh. dead. I'm not dead. We're all in there before you become saved. You're spiritually dead. You're not alive. You may seem alive. You may look alive. But you are dead. Amen. You follow the ways of the world. We're doing things the way of the world. Think about some of the folks you see. Some of the people we admire on television. They're living all these lives. We know they're not following God. I mean, there's one, one particular young man, he needs to get his life together. Every time I turn around, he's getting baptized in the church somewhere. <laughs> Brother, you need to get saved. I mean, and these preachers that baptize them really mess me up because they're trying to get some tithes. And, oh, I called it out, didn't I? He needs to get saved. Somebody needs to say, son, you need to sit down and get rooted and grounded, discipled in Jesus Christ because what you're doing now is not right. You can't keep coming back and forth and thinking that's uh uh that's you feeling sorry for what you did. You're spiritually dead. They follow the spirit of who is now at work and those who are disobedient. That's the spirit of Satan. When you're doing things you know are wrong, when you're doing sometimes they don't realize they're wrong. See, we we make an assumption that everybody knows they're spiritually dead. Most of them don't. They're after the court in their human nature. When Adam and Eve fell, we had an evil nature planted inside of us that causes us to sin. That's why you need Jesus. Yes. See, when we get around folks that are sinners, sinners do what sinners are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They sin. Amen? Amen? And sometimes we can be critical of them when we really need to understand they're spiritually dead. They don't know any better. It's like children. When children are first born, they don't know any better. But they do know how to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we have to teach them how to do right. The same with folks who aren't saved. If they're not saved, they're sinning because that's what sinners do. We've tried in this country to pass laws to keep people from sinning. How well does it work? It doesn't. Prohibition came about because they said drinking was sinful. So we passed this laws, the temperance laws. It didn't fix it. Made it worse. Yes. Think about us. God wrote the Ten Commandments down. How many of y'all keep the Ten Commandments? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Law does not make you do right. In fact, most of the time, law makes you too wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell my kids not to do something. That's probably what they're going to try to do. That's our nature. That's the sinful nature we have that needs to be fixed. We're blind to the truth when we're spiritually dead. And so are these people. Despite the ridicule of threats they make to Christians and they make fun of, yeah, you do good and all that. I mean, y'all heard that kind of stuff. Huh? Because they're spiritually dead, they can't see you because you're alive. People can't stand around and be around people that are alive when they're dead. Amen. And they'll make fun because they know they're missing something. They need a savior. I, here's how you know folks are in this stage. Here's some things you'll hear them say. I don't believe <laughs> there is a God. Hmm. Uh -huh. There are people say that. Mm -hmm. I had one of my relatives tell me that one time. Mm he's -hmm. trying to argue with me about the Bible. I said, so you trying to tell me you don't believe in God anymore? You got a real quiet one. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so what, you know, get in and get out. You're going to sit here and argue about stuff that you know better than because you were raised in the same household I was. You need to, you know, you believe in God. Yes. Well, yeah, okay, then be quiet about some of the stuff you're talking about. Because if you believe in it, you need to be careful. But if you don't believe in it, you're spiritually dead. Yes. There are people who have never been in church. They've never read the Bible. Hmm. They've never sung a hymn. They have no, we have a generation of young people who don't know God because they've never been introduced to him. They're spiritually dead. 
That's why they say they don't believe in God. The Bible is just a bunch of myths. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard that? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's like the Quran and, you know, Hindu writings. It's, it's a good book. But, you know, I'm not sure all that stuff happened. You know, you're talking about a virgin birth. Y'all know, know that's one of the most controversial things that's ever been written in the Bible is the virgin birth. They've been arguing about that since 100 AD because they don't believe it happened because they don't believe God. And you'll be have people tell you that. Third, God is just a crutch. That's for weak-minded people. People who don't, who aren't smart enough and intelligent enough. I had a young man tell me that one time. So yeah, that's for uneducated people. You know, people who, <coughs> you know, they, they're mentally a little weak and they need a crutch. I looked at him and said, how many degrees do you have? Well, you know, I have an associate's degree. I said, I have five degrees. I said, he's not a crutch. It's not for emotionally intelligent, unintelligent people. But there are people who tell you that. Why? Because they're dead. They're dead. I'm not a Christian because religion is responsible for most of the wars in history. Y'all heard that? We've had presidential candidates and presidents to say that kind of stuff. Well, you know, war, you know, Christianity has caused this, that, and the other. But we're not talking about religion. We're talking about Jesus. Jesus has never started a war except for Satan. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's something else a person on the stage will say. There are many ways to get to God, so what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. There is a difference. There's a difference between Judaism and Islam and Christianity. You know what that main difference is? We believe that Jesus is God. He's our Savior. Yes. They don't. We worship the same God. They don't believe in Jesus. And I'll tell you that when we start to experience God in our lives and they start to see God's power move in our lives, they'll know what the difference is. That's why it's important to become a disciple. There is no hell because God is a God of love. <coughs> Your preacher's saying this. The Bible talks about hell. I have been a good person, so I will be okay. The Bible says there is no one righteous, not one. <coughs> How do you know whether you're good or not? Compare yourself to perfection, which is God. If you haven't hit that yet, you're not good. There is no absolute right or wrong. It all depends on what the definition of is is. Mm -hmm. Well, you know it depends on what you mean by it. There's no, you know, truth is relevant. I, you know, I can twist the truth and change it based on what I feel or what I say. There's no absolute right or wrong. And here, here's the final one. I'll take my chances with the man upstairs. People who are spiritually dead are gambling that they're right and God is wrong. They're gambling that what they believe to be true is right and, and they're wrong. But here's what spiritually dead people need. They need us to give them an explanation of the gospel. Yes. <coughs> they do. How many of y'all saved in here? You saved right here? They need you to tell them about Jesus. Yes. They need you to tell them that he died on the cross for them yes, so did. they can be saved. Because they don't realize that. They need to see the gospel lived out. Yes. That means they need to see you live an example of what God's life is like. Yes. When they see the example, they say, wow, you're different. Yeah. Yes. 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 You're not perfect. So don't, don't think that's what it means. You know, it's not about you being perfect. They can see there's something about you they don't have. Yes. If y'all have people being drawn to you and tell you their problems and issues, you're like, why do people keep coming? Because they see Jesus in you. When you read the Bible, their people came all over and told Jesus what their problems and issues were because they knew he had an answer for them. And God is leading them to you so you can give them the answer. Jesus. You need to answer the questions about the Bible, about God, about serving God and becoming a disciple. 
Don't be afraid of getting folks and they want to get a little intellectual and talk about the word. I'll, I like folks who challenge me on the word of God because that means they're really curious. Sometimes when folks are trying to be in opposition to you, it's because they're seeking God and they need someone to give them an answer. Sometimes we're afraid to give an answer because we don't think we know. Tell them about what God has done for you. There you go. Tell them where you used to be and where you are today because of God. And tell them, hey, I tried on my own, but when I, when I met a man named Jesus and I took his hand, I started following him, my whole life changed. Amen. Yeah. Wonderful. I can't tell you that I did it because I know I didn't do it. I tried before. Right. Yes. But Jesus came into my life. He saved me and changed me. He's constantly. I'm not perfect yet because I'm striving for perfection. But I can tell you this. Something changed in me. Yeah. All right. My Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's how you tell people about Jesus. Yes. When you live the life, people start to see the change and realize you're not like everybody else. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm following yes. Jesus. Yes. I want to tell folks, don't follow me, please. Mm -mm. Don't you follow me. Because you'll die and go to hell. I don't have heaven to heaven, hell to put you in. But Jesus does. You follow me as I follow Christ. You yes. follow Jesus. Yes. You keep following Jesus. Yes. Doesn't matter what the preacher does, what anybody else does. You hold on to Jesus' hand and keep following him. All right. I don't care what the AME church does or any church does. If they start moving away from Jesus, I'm going to move to where Jesus is. Yes. Amen. 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 Because at the end of the day, that's who died for me. That's who was born in a manger, came to earth, walked 33 and a half years, and died on a cross and was resurrected for me. Love y'all, but none of y'all did that for me. No. As much as I think y'all love me, as soon as you get a chance, you know, you, you turn your back on me. We, we're all the same. I'm saying the same thing. I love y'all, but you know, I'm human. But God has never turned Turn his back on me. No, no. God has never failed me. No. When I was at the lowest point of my yes. life, yes. God was there for me. My parents weren't there. My brother and sister weren't there. But God was there for me. Yes. That's why I love him. That's why I serve him. That's why when I don't do right, I get back on my knees and get, get, get back in good standing. Because I love Jesus. Oh, yes. Because of what he's done. We need to give them an invitation to receive Christ. When you know someone is spiritually dead, you need to let them know that Jesus lives and he's available for them. God is not about race. He's not about gender. He doesn't care what you've done in the past. God will forgive you and let you move on. He'll change your life instantly. Yes. All you have to do is, is decide to follow him. We need to tell people that. We need to tell people you need to make a decision for Christ, let him change your heart, and pretty soon you'll be working for Jesus because he's done too much for you not to. When you start trusting him, truly <coughs> trusting him, your life will never be the same. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's what we got to do with spiritually dead folks. Stand with me.